charcoals. From between the whispering pages of countless volumes, adventure urges you to make a choice. Escape a dungeon dark, dive into an ocean deep, or discover a planet unknown. There is only one rule. Always choose your own adventure, bros! The Choose Your Own Adventure Bros is recorded live on the Fulcrum Entertainment Channel, where the audience chooses the story. This week, we are reading The Dragon's Den. Hello, Jackson. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We're back after hiatus last week. <laughs> We did one last week. Were we? Oh no, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. It was the week before that we had a little break. But we did one. We did. We, we did. Uh, we did the crazy space and beyond. Oh god, yeah. How could yeah. I have forgotten? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was unfortunately only a week ago. Yeah, I'm afraid. Mm. Um, those memories aren't as far back as you thought. Oh god. Okay. Patrick's in the chat. Good to see you, Patrick. This book Hello. cover seems familiar, and it isn't just that it's a Lord of the Rings clone. Yeah. Uh, I'll swap the camera around at the moment so we can see it better, but this book cover is quite fun. It's one of yeah. the better book covers, I think, of of one of these. That's what a, a lot of them look like, isn't it? They've just taken various elements of the choices and just kind of mashed them into the cover. So There's one thing uh, that maybe I can show when, when I when I move the camera over that I like is the, the sort of feline elements of, uh, of the dragon design. It's mm. very old school, very kind of like 70s like illustrations. Oh, yeah, you don't yeah, really yeah. see it that much anymore. Hmm. All right. Well, there's I will now get the cameras swapped over so you can start reading. Yeah, so. I'm uh, I'm gonna try and limit myself on the number of beers that I have tonight. Oh, okay. I always, I always get too, too merry and don't make the right choices, so I'm just gonna have one or two tonight. <laughs> All right, okay, so with that in mind. <laughs> 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 Ah, the fax. Always be careful when you take a fax in the UK, ladies and gentlemen. It can be quite serious. <laughs> we are not sponsored by fax premium quality lager beer in any way. <laughs> I would love to be sponsored by that. Yeah, we, we, we wish, right? So, yeah, I was just sorry. I didn't really give the, the sort of close view of the dragon that I wanted. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just very old school, and this little team that we've got up here does kind of remind me of the Dungeons and Dragons crew from the old D and D cartoon. Oh yeah, yeah, I can kind of see that. Hey, we've got more people hanging out in the chat. So we have Elena, who's here. Thank you very much for joining. It's good to see you. And Skylar asking if Elena's here. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Space and right back to Earth, more like it. Yeah, we did do that. We went back in time, I suppose. Maybe that's the beyond of space and beyond. I'm, go I'm going to be honest. I'm struggling to remember anything that happened. In <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Action's in the house. There, it, it, we went to Earth for a bit, and then it got real, like, stupid. You know, like, they're eating all these brown discs and putting them into their face holes. <laughs> Oh, also, since they're, they're here on the screen, a couple of other things. This is part of the reason why I chose the dragon. Is this an early birthday present that I got? I really love this little crystal dragon, skull dragon head. Really enjoy it's that. It is. I don't know what exactly it is made of. They did not say. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, it's good enough for me. Yeah. And this here was a, uh, a present from Jackson that yeah. I'm very grateful for. This, my own personal lament configuration. Which that does... one's uh, made of inexpensive Chinese plastic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so doesn't exactly summon Cenobites, but it's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Skylar says on the last episode, did we get shot in the army or something? We did, I think. That sounds like something that might have happened, yes. <laughs> yeah, we accidentally got drafted like or recruited, and something definitely bad happened to us. This is another one with is the actual physical books do tend to have much better illustrations than the PDFs we had. So I really enjoy this. The the dragon's horde with what appears to be some sort of wizard there, perhaps. 
So let us begin here, mm. as all good uh, uh, role play adventures do in a tavern. <laughs> what is that hat? <laughs> it's like a. <laughs> It's a sort of Robin Hood hat, I guess. Like, I get, yeah, it's, it's like a trilby that they've just tried to make ye oldie worldy trilby. You know? <laughs> yeah, I feel like maybe this person doesn't really uh, know exactly what that hat looks like. And uh, Skylar Hart has said, I assume you've seen the new Hellraiser. No, I haven't. Um, I think it was that, that was on Hulu or something, wasn't it? I, I, I do not have lady, these devices, services. It's Lady Pinhead no. Yeah, I I don't mind the idea of it, but I, I haven't seen it yet. And like, I love Pin, I love Hellraiser, but in order to love Hellraiser, you have to accept that the majority of Hellraiser is bad. So <laughs> I'm not like, you know, jumping out to go find it. As as a Sonic the Hedgehog fan, I relate to that. Yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, there's like there's like two really good Hellraiser movies, and then some of the movies. Yeah, so it is long ago. You're in the time of knights and castles and dragons. You are a wanderer, travelling from one small medieval kingdom to another. At this moment, you are in search of an adventure that will test all of your abilities and perhaps lead you to your fortune. You are travelling through a small kingdom when you see scorched trees, burned fields and deserted houses. The remaining local people are too terrified even to talk about what has happened, particularly with a stranger. But you know that these could only cause... So you know that there could only be one cause of the destruction. Dragons. Excuse me a moment. I think. No, sorry. I'm going to sneeze at some point, and whether I manage to mute it or not is going to be a complete gamble. Okay, so if it just goes silent, we know that you're sneezing. Yes. Um, you also know that dragons are notorious thieves who hoard treasure that they steal. Here's your chance for some real excitement. Ooh. That evening, while dining at a small inn, you chance to overhear two people talking at a nearby table. Treasure is being discussed, and a map is being examined. You slip quietly from your seat and move into an empty chair at their table. Taken by surprise, they look at you suspiciously. I haven't got a voice yet. Um... <laughs> at least no, it doesn't have to be American. Yeah, I suppose so. Like, I, like elf, elf voice. Now about this treasure. That's you just say. That, that woman voice, isn't it? Uh, I'll work on it, I'll work on it. <laughs> Surely you need an experienced hand to help you find it. <laughs> this voice is going to be good. <laughs> the two conspirators stand up and are about to bolt for the door, but you hold your hand up and they sit down again. Now let's have a look at that map. <laughs> you say with a grin. A map? Oh, what map? One of them says. Boke, have you seen any maps? No. The other replies. He is a small, thin boy about your age. I don't know anything about. The one that you have talked into the top of your boot. <laughs> you interrupt. Are you a king's agent? Asks the heavier one, a look of fear on his face. On my honour as a free wanderer, I'm not. Oh, yeah, because I believe a word you say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... If you're not an agent, then you're going to get all three of us sent to the salt mines. Oh, the God. king's spies are all about. we better discuss this in my room. We can't all go upstairs at once. It would be too conspicuous. So we'll go one at a time. I'll go first. How can I trust that the two of you won't try to slip out the back of the inn or even try to do me in upstairs? <laughs> Uh, bless me. Uh, who's both? Bless me. We wouldn't do that. You seem to be, if you are what you seem, the one person we're looking for, says Boke. So, if we trust them and go <laughs> to the room, turn to page 10, where it focuses, or if we don't trust them and insist on meeting outside, we go to page 58. So, what do we do, guys? Do we trust these, these, two, these two good fellows that we have met here immediately I mean... in, this, in this tavern? I don't know, it kind of feels like we're the asshole already in this. <laughs> like, we just like completely barged into two of the people's Yeah, side. I don't I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. We, we just jumped in. So it's probably not the best way to start a relationship. Hmm. Let's see what's going on in the comments. Rolando, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Action, I heard that Pinhead is female in the book. I don't believe so. And and Skylar Hollett said that in a hellbound heart, I thought Pinhead was male. I thought so. I think he's the hell priest in Hellbound Heart, I think. So yeah, I, I do think he was male. Patrick says, you fellas haven't seen The Boys on Amazon. I have seen The Boys. That We've got Amazon Prime. I have seen The Boys. It's pretty, pretty sweet. I've seen... I don't think I've seen the latest series of it. All right, it's... Is it's there a good. new one? The last thing I saw was the guy's head exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a new one after that. Okay. There is. It's, yeah, it's pretty good if you can manage to check it out. Let's see. Um, Patrick here, before the game even starts, really, I predict uh, death by one, falling from a great height, two by fire, and three by being eaten. Mm. I feel like we have to die by fire at least once. Like it's a bold of you to assume that we actually get to the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I predict there's going to be no fucking dragons in this book. <laughs> All right, okay, we'll, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> Interestingly, everyone trusts them. So James says to trust them. Skylar says go upstairs with them. Uh, Patrick says to trust mm-hmm. them. Helena says to trust them, and so does Mister Action. Right, well, so, it looks like we're trusting these guys then. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to see what happens up in their room on page ten. I hope this is all above board and fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once secure in the privacy of his room, all right, let me just remove that comment. Thank you very much, Mister Action. Once secure in the privacy of his room, the heavy man begins his story. My name is Renald. A week ago, I found a man lying wounded way up on Dragon Mountain. I tried to help him, but he was past help. Just before he died, he gave me a map. What does the map show? You ask. Renald unfolds a small piece of parchment. The location of a cave high up on the side of the mountain. Whether there is treasure in the cave, I don't know. But in the last minutes of his life, the men mumbled something about an immense hoard of dragon treasure beneath the earth. Tell me how to get to this cave, you say. And I'll give you part of any treasure I find. Not gonna lie, sir, you are a creepy little motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this terrifying child. Oh, rude. What strange spectre have we met in the inn? Um, I think I can... I keep forgetting his... He's just a snivelling little guy, isn't he? Think I can find the cave, says Boke. I'd like to see what's inside it myself. Have you forgotten the king's guard? Asked Renald. There's a little used path that we can take to get by the guard. The less they know about our comings and goings, the better. Renald shakes his head. Um, oh God, I, for some reason, these acts, I think they're too close together is the issue, so they're really, like, twisting my yeah. melon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll stay here and wait for your return. I don't want anything to do with dragons. Settled, then. Or unsettled, more like. <laughs> Boke and I will leave at dawn. After a few hours of sleep, you and Boke start off at a daybreak. You follow a narrow, twisting street to the edge of town, and then a narrow path up into the low hills beyond. As you near Dragon Mountain, the trail becomes steeper and steeper. Just as you are crossing a shadowy clearing, you and Boke are riveted to the ground by an unseen, powerful force. Shit off. Hmm, this guy might have something to do with it. Hmm. A burst of hearty laughter comes from the trees as a tall, bearded figure wearing a long, elaborately patterned cloak steps into the clearing. He carries a long, carved staff. The wizard, Zarkon, exclaims Boke. So, you would dare to enter the cave in the mountain, Zarkon says. You would go down to the dragon's den itself. I'll wager for treasure. Don't look so surprised. I've just been reading your minds. Nothing much to that. Zarkon laughs again. (laughs) And you, Vagana, disguised as a boy, no less. He says, pointing his staff at Boak. With that, Boak's hat flies off, revealing a full head of beautiful blonde hair, which, coming undone, falls to her shoulders. You're an old meddler, Zarkon, 
says Boke, whom you realize you must now call Vagana. Stay out of this. We mean to find our fortunes and return. Zarkon frowns. Watch your tongue, young lady. I could easily change you to a tadpole. Luckily, I like your spirit. <laughs> then he turns to you. And you, Wanderer, are you the one I have waited for? Your guidance will be invaluable to me. Let me introduce you to a friend. Okay. I like this. It's a good drawing. Zarkon's interesting. I hope we get some more uh, decisions mm. soon, though. I, I yeah. want you guys to be able to get involved in the game a bit more. He likes your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he didn't like our spunk. Yeah. And also, I just want to say hi to uh, Lamp Girl, who's popped in. Hey! Glad to see you. I hope you're enjoying. Uh, <laughs> Skylar says it's going to be a perfect run this time. I okay. don't think so. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect run in these ones. <laughs> <laughs> I Did we get... We might have almost got a perfect run on one of them, I think. Um, wait, is that correct? Oh, yeah, okay. The small figure of a dwarf child jumps into view. This is Gnarly. One of the few dwarfs ever to have left Dragon Mountain, Zarkon continues. Three years ago, he fell into an underground stream that carried him out of the mountain over a waterfall. Miraculously unharmed, he was found on the bank of the lake below by a woodcutter. Since then, Nali has been raised by the woodcutter's family. Now he wants to go back into the mountain and return to his own family. Since my mission takes me to Dragon Mountain, I have promised to help him find his home. If you and Vagana will join us, perhaps we can help each other. We don't have much choice, Vagana whispers. Exactly, agrees Zarkon. Now, if memory serves me, we can take this path straight up the mountain. A rough climb, but it's the fastest way. Or... We can take the other path, which follows a longer winding route. That way will leave us in better shape to explore the cave once we get there. We'll let our young adventurer decide. Wise. So, <laughs> yeah. I is a wise and <laughs> ancient the, wizard. The, the, the least qualified member of the party can choose. It, it's got that slight video game logic, like uh, when... The other guy was like, you might be just the expert we need. And like, expert in what? Yeah, yeah. So are we going to the mountain on page 18, or do we decide to take a winding route to page 86? I, I like the winding route. It seems safer. I'm I'm with you on that. Um, and let's see, uh, Lamp Girl is also with you on that, as is Lena. I think that's correct. And let's see. Uh, what are you, oh, sorry. So is Skylar. Hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. So is James. So I think that it will be where we're going. Let's see this. I feel like the shorter path will lead to death. If it's straight up the mountain, there's a lot of risk of like, well, as uh, as Patrick already predicted, uh, death from a great height, falling from a great height. Yeah. That was it. The story about the kidnapped elf princess went directly to a good ending. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It was like, yeah. That, it was still that's like two minutes on that book. It was just like, oh, you rescue her. Like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, fairy kidnap was like really super simple. And uh, Patrick has said, sure, take the winding path. Mm. All right. Okay, guys, that's what we're doing. We are going along to page 86. 86. A... Yes, jump in the book. We haven't had a jump this far as of yet. So ig ignore that. Ign that's another page. Okay. Um, I don't see any use in wearing ourselves out. You say as you start up the winding path. The four of you climb easily and steadily higher until the woods start to thin out. Ahead, rough, sorry, ahead, through the last of the trees, you see a broad alpine meadow sloping up toward the top of the mountain high above you. You are halfway across the meadow when you hear noises behind you. Turning, you see a large group of soldiers on horseback charging towards you. Okay, yeah, maybe this wasn't the best choice? Have you, right, Skylar's just given us money i think and she whoa, said whoa skylar whoa so, what i think that means i have to drink <laughs> <laughs> and i have I like i have plywood. comedy sized can of right okay 
You can't you can't have the whole <laughs> like <laughs> it's like the size of an oil drum, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> It's pretty huge. That if anyone if anyone can get hold of uh, fax beer cans, they're they're fun enough just for the pictures on the can. Mm. They're like hyper Viking. This one's got um, Thor's goats on it, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, there they are pulling his chariot and everything. Mm. It's pretty pretty sweet. Mm. Ah. Right, Wookie, with you, doing it. <laughs> Wookie Talks has joined us as well. Good to see you, Wookie Talks. It says, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden impact at the bottom. Truth. Wise words. So, come on. Focus now. Look, look at him. You can focus on them. There you go. Drink. Right. <laughs> is, that, is that another drinking game? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the looks of that. You say? We haven't got much chance out here in the open if they attack us. Don't worry, says Zarkon. I recognize my friend Valyrian in the lead. He's the captain of the King's Guard. Oh, but it's great that everyone knows everyone around here and are all friends. Yes, it's almost like you're the only one who's out of the loop. What was that dwarf doing just hiding in the bushes? Until you came out. What was that about? It's just, it's just there. Well, you know, some people don't like dwarves. They put them off. So we can make sure <laughs> that the dwarf just, just stays over there. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm being put off by a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> the horsemen gallop up to you and dismount. Zarkon, I'm glad that I found you, Valerian says. The king requests your urgent return to the castle. But I'm on an important mission, says Zarkon. Prince Rupert has fallen ill, Valerian says. Again? Zarkon exclaims. <laughs> but I've just cured him. <laughs> just did For it. For God's sake. Has he been putting it about again in the back alleys? <laughs> I told him it would come back. <laughs> if he's not careful, it'll fall off next time. <laughs> um, this time it appears more serious than the times before, says Valerian. <laughs> <laughs> Which is close enough to venereal. Um, <laughs> your presence always seems to cure him. I know, Zarkon says with a sigh. I guess I'll have to go. He is, after all, the heir to the throne. Half of your party will return with me to the castle. The what, other what? half... <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I need some company, you know. It's a long time. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I think he might mean like half of Valerian's party. So I think we keep. I don't think like the dwarf and Boku, or not Boku, Bo Vagana, Vagana. Oh. Uh, I think they're staying, I think. Okay. And then we get some horsemen. Right, okay. The other half will provide safe ex escort for my companions to a point high on the mountain. Uh, I'm sorry, Zarkon, Valerian says, but my orders do not include. Zarkon raises his staff and glowers. I advise you do as I say, he commands. You know how I get when I'm mad? Let's find out on page 61. As if I could forget, Valerian groans. All right, we'll bend the rules a bit. <laughs> Valerian divides up the troop. Five of the guard, including himself, will return with Zarkon. The other five will escort you up the mountain. I will rejoin you soon, I hope, Zarkon calls as he jumps on the back of Valerian's horse. You watch as they gallop back down the mountain. Then you, Vagana, and Nali each climb up behind a horseman and continue on up the mountain. Okay. Okay. Okay, we, we, we're getting a choice on this page. Okay. It is late afternoon when you see a tower at the top of the mountain. At the same time, the horses stop before a strange structure in the ground. A low fence of thick metal threads running in both directions as far as you can see. Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> oh my this, God. What game is it that you guys are playing right now? Stop trying to hurt my brother. Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> but thank you so much for your support, guys. It really is appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, you know, 
if you'd rather like we didn't do these books and you just watch me get shit faced over like the course of an hour and a half, like, we could do that. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we could manage it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, says I had the ho- so Tower sending the horses stopped for a strange structure in the ground, low th- fence of thick metal threads running on both directions as far as you can see. You dismount, touch one of the threads, and instantly jerk your arm back in pain. The fence is burning hot. Oh! You try to step over the metal threads, but one of the troopers reaches over and grabs you. This is the dragon line, he says. The king has forbidden us to cross it. The dragons will know if we do. How? You ask. The dragons are supposed to be under the mountain, miles away. I know not what evil magic is at play here, replies the trooper. But I would not tempt fate. You may go on at your own risk, but my men and I are returning to the castle. No matter what Zarkon asked us to do, I would advise that you do the same. Wait so, a minute. What the fuck? What is the point? You came like 20 feet up a fucking mountain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we've had a good day out. Um, it's time to go back now, I suppose. Wait, this is like that, that thing in Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I got one ride left in me. One last ride, you said. <laughs> you just, you just leave. <laughs> leave yep. at the end of it. That's. I gotta go be Sam Elliott somewhere else. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, we're what do you guys down think? The mountain now, are we? Like... <laughs> yeah, I, I hope not. I hope we're not going down. I hope we're not going down the mountain. <laughs> okay. So, guys, what do you think? What do you think? I've had, we've had Lamp Girl who said for 43, so to uh, cross the dragon line. So that's, I think, the only boat we've had so far to go anywhere. But yeah, I don't think anyone wants to go down the mountain. Patrick saying the Fulcrum pals will be wearing fancy new hats next week because of your generosity. Oh, man. Yeah. We've got to find some fancy hats. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, fancy hats are easily found where you are. Yeah, I have I have access to like fancy hats within grabbing distance right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like my hat that I'm wearing right now is pretty fancy. It's got like little studs on it. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. It's gothy. Yeah. <laughs> James said his coin landed on an edge. I mean, fair enough. But we've got we've got a couple of votes for forty three so far, <laughs> and. Uh, Lamp girl's happy about us getting new hats. Everyone likes a new chapeau, don't they? It's always good to have. Okay, mm. then, to 43. Let us continue on. We'll cross the dragon line. Yeah, fuck the dragon line. <laughs> I think I'll keep going up the mountain. You say. I'm with you, says Virginia. Uh, Vagana, Rory, rather. Mm. Gnarly also nods, yes. So can Gnarly not talk? Um, like, how young is Gnarly in, like, Dwarf? I mean, just count yourself lucky that it's not another voice you have to keep track of. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah, maybe, maybe they are, like... I'm, I'm assuming that picture was the Dwarf, like, emerging from the hiding place that we saw earlier. Um, yes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, probably, probably still a beardling. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the um, all right. uh, thanks for bringing us this far you tell the troopers as you step over the dragon line you turn to wave goodbye as they ride off down the slope looks as if we're on our own looks like it Vagana agrees and even with the, oh, and even with the map she says taking it out of her boot I still can't tell where that cave is Cave or no cave, I think we're on to something. You see that tower up there? That could mark an entrance into the mountain. Oh, Gnarly's talking now. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um, It also appears to mark the top of the mountain, says Gnarly. Um, You ignore his remark and climb toward the tower. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, Gnarly. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) You're almost there when you notice a number of large black shapes in the mountain in the southern sky. They're closing fast. 
I don't like the look of those things. You say? Let's make a dash for the tower. There may be a door at its base. All right, run for the tower. Yep. This is not even a choice. It's like, do you wait for the black shapes to descend upon you? <laughs> no. No, I don't. What do you get? Oh, uh, what? What? Uh, the three of you race for the tower. Book, damn it. Frantically, you search around the base, but there is no way in. The black shapes are now clearly the hideous forms of dragons. A dozen of them close in and begin circling the tower. What'll we do now? Gnarly asks in a shaky voice. <laughs> Before you can answer, a huge blast of flame whips across the mountaintop. When the smoke clears, only the scorched earth remains around the blackened stone tower. Well, dang. Patrick called it. Patrick called it. Yeah, okay, so that that's one of your things already coming true, Patrick. It was we, Patrick, uh, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, with the prediction of we would die in fire, that we would die in yeah. flames. Yes, absolutely, yeah. I don't know if that's like just, that expectation <laughs> is to go with it. Uh, so that the smoke is what's left of us, I guess? Yeah. Dark. Wow, okay. Um, interesting. I think that like, is... like, what the fuck are we supposed to do instead? Then we go back with the dwarves? Like, what? Yeah, we, we go down the mountain. Like, uh, Hang on, that looks like an end as well. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> are we supposed to climb up the hard way? This is very strange. So... So, so this is this is forty, and I'm pretty sure like forty three and forty nine were our, our choices. We were on page sixty one, right? Or maybe Where my content at? <laughs> yeah. So, so the options were to to take the trooper's advice and go to forty nine, and take it to forty three, and forty nine is just an ending. So we'll read it just to see what it is. But um, I Lamp Girls just made a, a nice dad joke. I'd like to just draw oh. attention to that. <laughs> Could there we say we were a bit? Hot headed. <laughs> yes, you could say that. You you have every right to, but yeah, I, maybe I'm, I might prefer. Well, yeah, I was hot headed. <laughs> I wanted to see some <laughs> fucking dragon. I mean, I suppose I did see some dragon action, but you know, yeah, like a bit more like escaping from dragons. You know, fighting. Dragons yeah, yeah, just... a bit more, a bit more um, Bilbo in Mount Doom. You know, yeah. You know, chatting shit to Smeg. 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 There is something. Uh, no, that's oh, you. Awesome. Sorry. There is something about this device that I definitely don't like. You say. Let's go back to the forest cover as fast as we can. <laughs> you turn into Terry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> I'll second that, says one of the troopers. Jump on her, let's get out of here. <laughs> it says you turning into what's his name? Yeah, I know, I, I know, but I, you know, like Yorkshire Tea Man, what's his name? Yeah, <laughs> Sean Bean. <laughs> yeah, the, the Scottish dude. Lords Fort are shooting. <laughs> Yorkshire, he's Yorkshire. Yeah, I said what? You what said Scottish. That? I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> Um, fortunately, going downhill is faster for the horses. No, but it's still cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's... Ooh, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but it still seems like an eternity before you reach the woods. Something in the back of your mind is shouting danger. Danger, danger, danger. When you get to the woods, the troopers hide their horses among the trees to rest. Then you go back to the edge of the woods and look up the slope. Far up on top of the mountain, you see black shapes circling. They could be birds, but birds flying at such a great distance would barely be visible from where you are. You know the circling shapes are something much larger. Dragons. I don't know about you, you say to Vergana and Nali, but I'm going deeper into the forest for a while. I have to decide if I really want that dragon treasure as much as I thought I did. The end. Which is a bit that that yeah lame. that one's quite lame. That is yeah. lame. So, right. So does that mean what does that mean for us then? So was it the long winding path? Is that what we need to go back to? We need to go back to the decision. I think decision so. Between... Yeah, maybe because maybe then um, the wizard Zarkon won't... will stay with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
God, where's Zarko? Where are you? Where are you? There he is. Right. There he is. So he, t- he makes us go to 33. Right. Okay. So we want to go straight up the mountain. So let's let's try that. Um, and everyone else, uh, yeah, yeah, Skylar and Lamp Girl, yeah, we we just sort of we just kind of just, just don't do that one. Yeah. Which, I think this is my thing, right? So as much as like Space and Beyond was wacky, it didn't do that. Whereas multiple books of these do that. There's there's an option where you just go home. Like the the diving one had loads of those. I, I I have a theory about that. And I think it's I think it's for the kids who are like a little bit more mature for their age, you know? Right. And I think it's a way for them to feel like good about the way things end. Because <laughs> it's kind of like it's like when I played the space one on my own and I just like made the choices as if it was me and I like every time I chose to stay in school and not like <laughs> do something really stupid like like listen to like fucking old man talking zen about space <laughs> um and the ending was literally like oh you become a captain and here's your you're like you have now a, cho- a tour of duty now and you do it at the end. <laughs> you got a job well done yeah like that, that was it and i was kind of like oh right so is that like for you know the the Hermione Grangers of the world to be like, ah, I I won the book, I'm the best. You know, like <laughs> that's not. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. I see what you, you mean. Know, you know Nerds. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I get it. Hmm. All right, let's see what. Oh yeah, of course, because Zarkon. Sorry, it's when he said released from Zarkon's spell. I was like, what spell? But he had pinned us to the ground. Did he? Yeah, do you remember? It's like like when he first turns up, it's like a force has held you down, and then Man. like it's it's that guy. Zarkon's a pervert. I'm calling this now. Zarkon is not to be trusted. No. You stride forward eagerly, leading the others straight up the mountain. After hours of climbing, the four of you reach the entrance to the cave. It is a shallow cave with smooth, dark walls. All of you search the cave carefully. You find nothing inside, and no openings going deeper. Well, I guess we might as well go back, Gnarly says. Wait, exclaims Zarkon. I sense a hollowness beyond this part of the wall. Stand back, all of you. In the dim light of the cave, Zarkon's eyes begin to glow. Holy shit. A ray of light emanates from them, striking the back wall. Slowly, a round spot on the wall begins to turn luminous red. Sparks fly from it. A hole starts to form in the rock and then grows larger. A strong rush of air flows through the cave and into the suddenly formed, in the newly formed opening. Suddenly, Zarkon grabs his head, groans and falls to the floor of the cave. His face is very pale. That is the most I can do, he says. My energy is exhausted. The underground forces here are very powerful and do not like to be disturbed. I am not sure we should use this entrance to the mountain. Well, we tried the other way and it sucked, so, you know. And why did you make it then, (laughs) my dude? Why did you, if you don't think this is the right thing to do, why did you exhaust yourself doing it? But okay, it's given us a choice. So if you agree with Zarkon and try to find another way into the mountain, turn to page 32. Or if you convince Zarkon that you should explore this new opening that he used all his energy to make, turn to page 11. I'm kind of leaning towards 11 on this because it's like, well, you've just made the hole, my dude. Like, we might as well have a quick look inside. Exactly that. Exactly. Let's see. Uh, oh, God. Oh. God. Like, like, all the 11s came at once. <laughs> it's good to Holy see. Shit. 11, 11, 11, 11. No fear. It's what I like to see. Yeah. You guys uh, know what's up. I'll, actually, that was interesting. Lamp Girls point out, give yourself goosebumps tend to call you out to taking the boring or safe option. Oh, is that what that meant? I, I completely blanked on what GYG meant. <laughs> it, it took me a moment, but I got it. I also like um, Patrick saying, rest in peace, Murmur, um, who I think just got erased out of ex- out of time, which is what happened in the last book. Which one we was just... Murmur? Murmur was like the dude who went with us. He was. Oh, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. The weird fish guy. Yeah. All right, okay, so we're headed off to page 11 to see what happens when we explore yes, this. Yes, you're all lovely people. 
I like um I, I actually kind of like like Zarkon getting exhausted. It reminds me a lot of the last unicorn. If you remember I need Wizard to get that on that. DVD again. And seriously now, lads, the um the, the fax is really going to my head. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put that certain material well, like, made from like we... pressed board. We've just been given like seventy dollars, man. I'm just like, like, <laughs> motherfucker, you better drink. Like, <laughs> Zarkon, you say? I think, I think I'll have a little drink and then I'll continue. <laughs> I think we should keep going into the mountain from here. Another entrance may be just as dangerous. You wait a while until Zarkon recovers and sits up with Vagana's help. Uh, All right, we'll try it, he says. Gnarly, crawl in and see if the rest of us will fit. After about 15 minutes, Gnarly re returns. The passage is tight, even for me, he reports. You were. <laughs> but it widens out into a large cavern after about 100 feet. It's very dark. I need some kind of light if I'm going to go back and investigate it. This time, we'll all go. All of us who wish to, Zarkon says, looking at Vagana. Don't come along, girl. I don't want you to ruin this for me. <laughs> no women. No women it's just allowed. me and the boys, you see. Oh, yes. A man mm. time. Mm. <laughs> After you, she replies, age before beauty. I hope you'll still have your sense of humour when this adventure is over, Zarkon mutters. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. With this, he disappears into the hole. The three of you follow. You get stuck a few times, but make it through with nothing worse than a slightly skinned elbow and a bruised knee. Now, skin, skinned elbow is pretty rough, though. Let's see what Ooh. Zarkon gets up to here. With right, so... Are they are they bats that are like flying directly at him, or are they dragons that are flying overhead? That could be either. Could yeah. be either. Let's see if the page reveals. Yeah. Zarkon holds up a staff. The end of it glows bright red, like a flaming coal. Once your eyes become accustomed to the darkness, the red light is quite adequate to see by. You are in a large cavern. Stalactites hang from the ceiling, and huge, water-carved structures, like half-melted statues, are spread across the floor. Suddenly, a horde of small, flying creatures comes sailing at you. Vampire bats! Shut your eyes tight, Zarkon shouts. Sorry, bats. bats. It, was, it was bats. It was bats. It, it was bats. Bats and bats. You obey Zarkon's command. Suddenly there is an explosion and a bright flash of light. The bats turn in mid-flight and vanish back into the darkness. I think we are safe here for the moment, Zarkon says. Let's see if I can get a bit more light out of this stick. <laughs> Zarkon wraps his staff against his arm. The end of the staff glows bright white, throwing light into the farthest reaches of the cavern. Zarkon cracks his staff over his knee and shakes it, and it starts to glow. <laughs> you notice Gnarly over on the other side, scraping frantically at the wall. The edge of something, a door perhaps, begins to appear under his fingers. What's wrong, Gnarly? Do you want to go out? Do you want to go out? Do you want to go out, Gnarly? Do you need, you need a wee? What's going on? You only just went out, Gnarly. <laughs> I do believe you found something, Zarkon says to him. Stand back, and I'll see what I can do. I mean, he said he couldn't do much after this, but he clearly could. He was that guy yeah, describing. Yeah, he's fit, isn't he? Like... <laughs> Zarkon waves his staff back and forth at the wall. There is a cracking and splitting sound as the wall alternately expands and contracts until it finally collapses with a loud crash. A huge cloud of dust rises from the rubble. As the dust clears, an elaborately sculpted door appears, its metal gleaming in the light from Zarkon's staff. By my word, exclaims Zarkon. Will you look at that? Complete with an inscription in dwarfish, no less. Perhaps, Gnarly, you would like to translate. The three of you look at Gnarly expectantly, but he stands pale as a ghost and shaking with fear. 
Right. Okay. We're gonna to go to page eight. But what do you th- what do you think this is? <laughs> like, of all our concerns of perversion and bad things happening, what is this image telling that, us? That is when you get into the confessional booth that is in the mountain, <laughs> and there's no one around, and you go in there, and you just go in, and it's like, oh, it's empty. But then while you're in there, someone comes in and just starts confessing like the most horrible shit that you've ever heard in your life to you. You know what I mean? It's like really like depraved, like horrible, like, like, and then like, you can't help but like be like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) That's what that is. I see. Okay. All right. You're on page eight. It's it's a curse directed at all dwarves. It's t- 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 too terrible to repeat. Gnarly stutters. It's the entrance to the realm of Tarlane, says Zarkon. The dreaded dragon master himself. He is the one I've come to stop. I, for one, must go through that door. Except for earlier when you Yeah, were like, oh, yeah, I'm go. glad. I'm glad we're on the same page on this one. This is like, but what if like the fucking prince was sick, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> yeah, like this, oh, well, this that, dude. That, that takes precedence over over dragon matters. The, the prince is sick. I really must be. Uh, yes, I must be going and uh, tending to the prince. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like... <laughs> Uh, I see what people be saying in the, in the comments. I, uh, Skylar's saying that you need a tankard to drink out for those streams. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I need to have this every Sunday now and <laughs> just be like, yes. I've got that massive stone tankard. Well, not stone, but it's like it's like a big clay thing or something like like pottery thing that you gave me. Yeah, I think I I have tankards, but I'm kind of. Um... For those of you who don't know, I'm kind of b- between houses at the moment, so yeah. like, all of my shit is in storage. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, is uh, Lamp Girl saying Gnarly's expen- expendable? Yes. I mean, um, yeah, they all are. <laughs> and those who enter the cave get turned into stone. Interesting idea. That could be potentially what those like half melted sculptures are. are oh so. yeah. Look at Lamp Girl, like, paying attention to plot details. Yeah, big brain. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, but I can't go with you, says Gnarly. Uh, I know, Zarkon says. Do not feel bad. You will find another way to help your people. Or to your people. Uh, I will go with you, Zarkon, says Vagana. Someone should go back with Gnarly. And help him on his search. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> hey, guys, do, do, you, do you want another chance to just opt out of this? Oh, so, fuck that. If we decide to go back and help Gnarly, we go to page 74. Oh, um, my God. If you insist on staying with Zarkon and Vagana, go on to the next page. So, no, like, I mean, it's right. you know my vote. <laughs> it's right here, but yeah. Also, God damn it, just focus in, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, pages. Come on, like... Camera, you can see this book. You know it's here. There we go. Right, and that, there we are. Right. So I'll try. I'll try and keep that out of the way to avoid spoilers. But we can go to page seventy-four if we take Gnarly back. Avoid spoilers on this forty-year-old choose your adventure book. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's new to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so Skylar and Lab Girl have come out straight away. We're saying let's stay. That's yep. Yeah, that that's my vibes. I don't really see the point in babysitting a uh, a dwarf back down the mountain like he's like my drunk friend. Do I have to get home? <laughs> it's just like the voice of experience there. <laughs> Interesting. Patrick has said seventy four killed us in past books, <laughs> but we're going anyway. Wow. In- Interesting. I was not aware. Did you know that seventy four? Wow. I've not kept track like that. Holy shit, Patrick! What are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Big brain, Patrick. That's, that's why Patrick often has the right ideas because Patrick's the smartest. I think that might be what we're finding out. He's like analyzing every kind of choice we've ever made, and he's like, he's there with a cigarette and a pinboard, being like, "Right, well, when we're in space, seventy-four killed us, but now we're now we're fighting dragons. 
Who fucking knows, man? <laughs> <laughs> We're in uncharted territories here. I love that idea. <laughs> Scott is just saying Jackson, and I don't know why. I don't yeah, know what I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Like, even though it's just written, that feels like the tone that my wife takes with me sometimes. You know, it's just like, <laughs> like maybe make that fax your last one, okay? You know, <laughs> you know that kind of tone. <laughs> okay, I think we've got mostly votes for going on to the next page, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're on the from Skyline from Helena. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I see. Oh, Jackson is the drunk friend you have. You have to walk home. Well, Jackson's already home. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's I, fine. I, I don't think that's ever had to happen between us. That's. I don't think we've ever, apart from like Christmas, like last year, maybe, or maybe the year before. I don't think I've ever been like properly shit faced. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You and I don't tend to like go out on like big, like heavy nights like that. No, I mean, I did get drunk that Christmas, but like the worst I did was like I, I chatted bollocks, and then while you and um, Simon were like still up, I was just like, I gotta get to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just it was, it was quite a nice one. Yeah, it's uh, just like I'm not like a, a horrible drunk. I'm just like ah. <laughs> Jackson okay. goes to sleep now. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, it's me. It's me. Yeah. I've come this far. You say? I'm not turning back now. It's all right, says Gnarly. I'm quite content to try and find my way alone. Cool. I mean, Gnarly, we've established Gnarly's a child, but Gnarly'd be fine. Like, he was hiding in a bush. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's well, like, we didn't bring him on this adventure. Him? Him? Her? I don't know. We we didn't bring them on this adventure. It was the That's true. Yeah, Zarkon did that. Like, yeah, Zarkon's just like we need a dwarf for some reason, and it's like we're cool, but you know, it's a kid. Like you know what we're doing, right? We're going to find like dragon treasure. It looks really fucking dangerous. He is super irresponsible, Zarkon. Yeah, okay. Zarkon's a bellend. Like, <laughs> like, um, like so... for real. If like if a choice comes up and it's just like, do we try and save Zarkon? The answer is no. <laughs> that's possible that might happen you know what I mean Like, you watch Gnarly disappear back down the passageway to the cave then you turn to the sculpted door it pushes open easily and you, Vagana and Zarkon step through you find yourselves in a corridor with walls of metal and a domed ceiling low enough for you to reach up and touch when you do you feel a slight tingling in your fingers the corridor is straight as an arrow you walk single file for what seems like miles. Finally, you see a tiny dot of bluish light far ahead. When you reach it, you see that it is the open entrance to a small, circular room. At the opposite side are three more doors, all closed. The centre door has a small, small circle above it, with an arrow drawn inside the circle. The door has no latch, but Zarkon presses a spot halfway up the doorframe. Silently, the door slides open, revealing a small, square room inside. I said, I know of these rooms, says Zarkon, stroking his beard. That one exists in our time is strange. They possess a peculiar magic. They can suddenly take you up or down. This one has all the marks of being directly controlled by Tarleen, the Dragon Master. We'd better avoid it if we can. So has, this is wait, an elevator. Has Tarleen been mentioned before? Yeah, yeah, he said it right at the beginning. When he was like, I have to go through the door. He was like, this is the realm of Tarleen, and I have to go fight him or something. Like, okay. But like, they, so they, they describe this thing as like, it has no, it's a door with no latch, and it has like a, an arrow pointing in a direct, like a circle with an arrow pointing up in it or something like that. I, I reckon we found a lift. Well, like the Austin Powers male symbol. <laughs> Not, I, well, maybe. But I, 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 <laughs> I, because it's doing this, like it says, like that one exists in our time is strange. Like, I, so I, I'm basically, I'm trying to prep everyone for weird, anachronistic stuff happening. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> the other two doors have latches. Vagana has opened one of them. Inside, a steep circular staircase winds upward. You open the third door to find another long corridor. 
This one, however, has rough, jagged rock walls. Vagana comes over and takes a look. This tunnel is more to my liking than that steep stairway, she says. The stairway is more likely to lead us where we want to go. But I'll leave it up to you, Zarkon says, looking at you. So do you want to go through the rough-hewn tunnel to page 101, or do you want to go up the stairway to page 24? I, I mean, Considering that Zarkon is like, yeah, but that tunnel doesn't go where we want to go, I feel like the tunnel is the place to be. I mean, I was going to say the opposite, but having said that, I'm only, I, you know, I was kind of only half paying attention to what you were reading and like making my own weird fan fiction in my head. So, <laughs> so easily done. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like I was just like, oh, this is Ark and he's a wrong and he's a wrong and there's something <laughs> going on between one. him and the prince, like, like for real. Oh, hang on, hang on. So, I mean, it's like the, 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 the prince is sick. That's, that's that's like a fucking code. That's like, you know, you know what I mean? I, I was wondering whether the prince is sick, whether because he said, like, oh, he always seems to get better when you're around, which I was like, yeah, is that like a sort of casual, like, yes, Rus Russia Rasputin reference? Like, maybe. Um, also, I mean, uh, it's I, real, I just... like, oh, the prince needs some dick. That's what I read. Like, that's what I read. <laughs> 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 you know, like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Prince is like seriously ill. Like he needs like ten cc's of hot cock, like right now. <laughs> Jackson, you're receiving too many faxes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think you're good. I think you're good, man. Don't worry. <laughs> Tell me um, if I say something like really, really offensive, and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Yeah, as far as we know, this is a loving, consensual relationship between Zarkon. Oh and yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not that creepy. Yeah, but but there's something. <laughs> there's something going on there. Like I look okay. over my glasses at Zarkon. Weirdly, I've got you guys telling me to go through the tunnel. So Lamp Girl saying the tunnel, Elena saying the tunnel, uh, and Skylar. I've taken that as both a Avatar reference and a vote for taking the tunnel. Secret tunnel. Um, and then Patrick, only one saying stairs. See you guys, this is the thing. We, we'll die because 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 we're going against what Patrick said. Yeah, I really but, think uh, we need to start counting Patrick as two votes. You know. <laughs> 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 all right okay so page 101 all right let's try the tunnel you say at least we won't have to do any hard climbing the three of you go into the tunnel the air inside is very warm soon it becomes hotter and hotter finally you have to stop going this way was probably a mistake you admit. We should just turn back. Just then, a loud roar from behind you fills the tunnel. A blast of flame follows. What is that? Asks Vagina. Vagina? Vagana. In a worried <laughs> voice. I keep thinking it's Virginia and it's not. Yeah. A fire lizard, says Zarkon. So a they dragon are... then? No, they are not as large as dragons. Little Mr. <laughs> fucking know it all. <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. I, I didn't know there was a classification between small fire lizards and large fire lizards. There's Please. plenty of things you don't know. I, I brought I, We brought you along here, so just bloody well, you know, be grateful. Brought me along? <laughs> I bumped into you, and then you insisted we bring you along a fucking dwarf who's gone now. I'm seriously starting to reconsider fucking you. What? <laughs> 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 they are not as large as dragons, but they can be just as oh, sorry, they can be just as deadly as you have seen. They can breathe fire. Unlike dragons, they are unable to fly. Oh. However, even the smallest fire lizard can outrun a horse. Oh. It's, okay, there's none here though. Another roar, much closer this time, fills the tunnel. Whatever it is, it's coming in your direction fast. The three of you dash down the tunnel in the opposite direction. To page 56. What? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> no. <laughs> that does not seem right. 101, right? 55. That's uh, a misread. Yeah, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. You okay. silly sausage. This is a good. I like this. Ooh, what the fuck? 
Is that Dragon wearing shades or is that no? Okay. No, I, I can see <laughs> why you thought that, but no, not quite. Yeah. Suddenly, you come out of the tunnel onto a narrow slab of rock that juts out over a vast circular pit. You almost stumble into it, but you catch yourself in time and warn Vagana and Zarkon who are behind you. The three of you huddle on the narrow ledge, bracing yourself against the wall. Seconds later, the fire lizard charges out of the tunnel. Unable to stop itself, it sails out over the pit. You see its evil claws flash in the air, its legs flailing in desperation as it arcs into the depths below. A piercing wail echoes about the circular pit as the fire lizard disappears into the void. The sound of its screams become fainter and fainter, trailing out to complete silence. You strain to hear the fire lizard hit the bottom, but you never do. <sighs> then you hear another roar from the tunnel behind you. Another fire lizard is racing towards you. Quickly, all three of you squeeze back against the wall. But this fire lizard manages to stop just in time to keep from falling over the edge. It sits there with blazing eyes watching you. How long can you balance on the narrow ledge trapped between the bottomless pit and the fire lizard? Not long. And then, then it ends. Doesn't even bother to, to show us dying. It's just like, yeah. You know, dead. That's, that's kind of annoying to me. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, I didn't appreciate the fake out there, especially because, like, I have the book in front of me, but um, where it is on the camera, I can't really see it. So I do read it from the screen. So I didn't know until like, I got to hear that we'd found an ending. <clears throat> very, very sad. I was hoping it might be a decent ending, but it's not. We at least got a decent drawing with it, and I was I was like part way through the page. I was like, okay, so we killed the dragon, but I know it says the end there. So like, what is it like? We kill one fire lizard. And we're like, ooh, too rich for my blood, and we all go home. But no, it's oh, just oh shit, lamp girl's right. There is the falling ending, maybe. Oh, the falling death, falling from a great well god, or could easily also be the eat. It could be all three. Yeah. This is technically Schrodinger's death. It's in a superposition of all three deaths. Yeah. Should we should we fuck off the voting and just listen to whatever Patrick says from now on? <laughs> <laughs> we can't just make this Patrick show, I, th I think. Well, I mean, like, do you guys want to win or not? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, what were what were the other options? Actually, does it? What was the number for the stairs? Show? Damn it, the stairs. I know it was the stairs. stairs. But what was the page number? Well, I don't know. <laughs> this is your department. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I, I, I'm doing no notes at the moment because like I haven't got my. I don't have a nice little notepad, like .txt file open that I can just scribble things down in. You're the one that does all the work. I just show up and get pissed and and find adventure game books in charity shops. That's all I, I know. Do. And that used to be my job, like, but now I start <laughs> doing things myself. It used to be Gilbert did everything. Um, oh no. Uh, release from Zarkon's spell. You hang on to the ledge. Page 13. Okay, it was 13. Right. So, go to 24. 24, 24, 24 to take the stairs. Right, I was just checking it wasn't an ending. Right. Focus. Focus. Fuck us. <laughs> fuck us. We have to fuck us. Uh, look, focus on him. You can focus on him. You like him. There we go. Zarkon. You agree with Zarkon that the circular stairway is the best way to go. But after half an hour of climbing steadily upward, you are not so sure that you made the right choice. You are tired and dizzy from going around in circles, but you keep climbing. Stop a moment, says Zarkon. I think I hear something. The three of you listen. Far above you hear a throbbing sound. What is it? Vagana whispers. It could be a dragon breathing. You suggest. Perhaps, says Zarkon. More likely some evil device of the dragon master. It's page 30. I mean, what are you basing that on, Zarkon? <laughs> oh. Just who or what is this dragon master? You ask. There are many legends about him, answers Zarkon. Some say that he has travelled back into our time 
from the future. Wait, what? Hmm. How can anyone come back from the future? Asks Vagana. <laughs> there are things stranger than you can imagine, Zarkon says with a chuckle. <laughs> In fact, there are things stranger than you... Oh, what? Can the mad... Mate, whatever. Wizards like <laughs> myself know something of this. Um, Is the Dragon Master a wizard? You ask. I don't think so, Zarkon replies thoughtfully. He is something different. What? Even I am not sure. I do not know what... I do know that with his dragons, he has spread death and destruction across the kingdoms. He must be stopped. Well, dragon master or not, says Vagana, let's go up and find out what's there. The three of you continue cautiously up the stairs until you reach a trap door closed above you. You listen quietly for a while. Then, slowly, you push the trap door open an inch or so. What you see makes you gasp. <gasps> I'm on to the second facts, guys. I only brought two this week because the huge, so I'm hoping that this, <laughs> I'm hoping that this is what you want. It should get you through the next 24 minutes. You should be I'd have thought right. so. You know, like, I'm fine. It's just like, you know, I, I want the people to get their money's worth. This is the image that we've got. Right, so here's a couple of things I want to go on to. So like, like, you're supposed to be in like fancy times. What is this like sports coat thing you're wearing here. You look like Jerry Seinfeld. Is it like a like a bodkin type thing? But you know, I don't know. And you've got like you've got like marigold gloves on. Like you're Doctor Strange or something. Oh god, that's yeah. <laughs> also yeah, just <laughs> this illustration in general. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had special ideas for you, my boy. I really don't want to like take it there, but there is something weirdly sexual about like this whole book. Like, <laughs> and it's just that I think it's the thing of like choose your own adventure books make their characters act in weird ways, and so it just means that everyone seems like untrustworthy. Skylar's plywood and me again. God damn it, <laughs> Skylar, please, please. Uh, you're looking into a luxurious chamber with deep, richly patterned rugs and ornately decorated walls. All about are large tablets set with dishes and goblets of gold and silver, some encrusted with jewels. On one side of the chamber, throbbing away, is a large device made of metal and crystal. I wish they'd stop using that word as well. <laughs> yeah, throbbing has come up quite a few times, hasn't it? Yeah, it's like like that that word. It has one use, and you're not <laughs> using it right. That is what you heard from below. Uh, this looks like the king's chamber. You whisper. A king's chamber, a king, a king. Or oh, that of a master thief, says Zarkon grimly. The three of you climb up through the trap door and stand listening for a few moments. Then... You search through the other rooms of the complex. They contain strange devices, things that you've never seen before, even in your extensive travels. We'd better hide, says Zarkon. I sense someone coming over here. He points to a large cabinet in the corner. It looks big enough to hold... Oh, sorry. It looks big enough to hold all three of us. <laughs> no, says Vagana. She points across the room to a space piled high with large folded pieces of cloth. We'd be much safer behind those weavings. Our adventurer here has probably had a lot of experience at hiding, says Zarkon, half mockingly. Which place do you think is the best to hide in? Not Don't in worry. the fucking cabinet with you, Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, <laughs> you fucking messing. Like... <laughs> Do you want to play a game of Scott? Hide in this cabinet. <laughs> it's just like, no. <laughs> Quick, get inside with me. We'll play sardines. We'll play the game that the prince and I play. So, guys, do you decide uh, to hide in the cabinet or do you decide to hide behind the weavings? What is it? Are we getting in the cabinet? Okay, I'm seeing some people. Uh... It's Skylar Lamka. What are you doing? Saying no, just jump in there with with Zarkon. Just 
go for it, sure thing. Hide the sausage it is. <laughs> Not the Iron Maiden, I mean Cabernet. Do you know what? That would be a very Goosebumps thing to do. I feel mm. R.L. Stein would have done that to us. Like, the wardrobe you thought was merely a cupboard is actually an Iron Maiden. Everyone's saying Cabernet. Helena's saying yeah, Cabernet. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, then. Like now, Gilbs has mentioned this. I think sometimes, sometimes maybe it's because we su we suggest a strong opinion one way, and everyone enjoys messing with us. Yeah, yeah. I think that might be the possible. I think they just like I th I think that we have some. You know, I said this 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 last time. I think there's some trolls in in our audience. <laughs> it was just like let's get them so far. And then when it's really funny, let's fuck them over. <laughs> like, like, so let's, <laughs> let's make them get in a cabinet with a pervert. Okay, it's not an ending. It's not an ending. Okay. 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 <laughs> I, I can fuck with that. I can fuck with that. Uh, it's your line. Oh, sorry. That's a strange looking cabinet. <laughs> you say? Still, it's large enough to hold the three of us easily. The three of you quickly climb inside. As you close the door behind you, there is a click, then a whirring sound. You didn't expect that. Suddenly you are whirled around, spinning faster and faster. You struggle to get the door open, but it's no use, and you are rapidly losing consciousness. What the fuck are we in a centrifuge? What? <laughs> Maybe. Like... <laughs> Maybe this is Zarkon's plan all along. When you wake up, the whirling has stopped. The door clicks open again. You shake your head to get rid of the grogginess in it. Aside from feeling dizzy, the three of you are all right. You brace yourselves for a confrontation with whoever might be outside the cabinet. But when you speak out, no one is there. When you peek out, no one is there. Instead, the room that the cabinet was in when you entered it has been replaced by a much larger room. One that is filled with the same kind of devices that were in the all that were in the old room. But there are so many more of them. On the other side of the room, a long, high window looks out over a broad valley ringed by tall mountains. A door next to the window leads outside. The three of you go out. The view is breathtaking. In the distance are many strange looking buildings and structures. By some magic that I don't understand, says Zarkon, we've been transported in time into the future from the looks of it. As he says this, you hear a heavy droning overhead in the sky. If we've travelled in time, you say, the dragons have followed us. Look up there. On page 79. So these are planes, right? Yeah, I was about to say it's planes, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Hundreds of black, cross like shapes fill the sky. What is happening? asks Vagana. Could those be dragons dropping their eggs? I have questions. <laughs> I have questions about that. Right, okay. Is that like how dragons lay their eggs in, in this world? I suspect that is going to actually be that their planes dropping bombs. They just they just fly over like farting them out. <laughs> <It's> just, like... <laughs> just hoping they don't crack. Right? That's quite cool. I you know I'd, I'd like to see that in a like in a fantasy thing. You know, like you know, can you imagine that? It's just that's just how dragons lay eggs. <laughs> <laughs> they just fly. It's like dragon eggs are so fucking hard that like they can survive a massive fall. So dragons just like like. There you go. Yeah, yeah, maybe there's like a thing like like whether like like dragons are sort of notoriously competitive, so they try and spread like their eggs around. Yeah. So they have a better chance of survival and not being hit by other eggs. So hang on, let's see. Uh this is you need to shout run for me. Oh sorry. Run! <laughs> you shout in a panic. You race for the cover of a nearby grove of trees. Suddenly, there are tremendous explosions all around you. One of them destroys the inside of the building you just came out of. Zarkon pulls you and Vagana to the ground, just in time to save you from being hit by pieces of window flying through the air. I have a horrible feeling, says Zarkon, that we have travelled forward in time to a period that makes the time we came from seem very peaceful. And I'm afraid our chances of returning to our time 
were just blown up. The end. Fuck. So the cabinet killed us, not in the sort of way that we were expecting, not in Zarkon having some sort of terrible touch. So that's just that's some kind of like um we we travel forward in time and now we're in like a post apocalyptic kind of survival war zone type thing. Yeah, like a bit like I suppose like um in the Army of Darkness where Ash travels back into the future, but like it's almost like we've gone not as far forward into the future as Ash did. Like we've gone a little bit less, so we're we're seeing the destruction that caused the post-apocalyptic world that he saw. Do you know what they want to start doing? They want to start doing linking these books together. So like, there's like the next book in the series is like something like our uh, post-apocalyptic bastard survival, and then that like this book, like if you get that ending, it links into this into the next one. You know, it's just like if you if you came from Dragon's Den, then start on this page but if you're just like starting this book on its own start from the page one that's an interesting idea and we we well like there's a sequel to mul- multiple of the goosebumps books have like part twos to them so like we've got return to the carnival of horrors to go through at some point so i'd be interested yeah, to see yeah. if that does it like whether you can be where you can choose like yes i've already read this yeah, um, yeah, yeah let's check out some people in the comments uh so are we time traveling yes apparently we are at certain points in this now um Skylar, we just ended up in Verdun. Yeah, that's what I was wondering whether, whether like we've gone from like you know whether we just basically like ended up in the Blitz or something. Hello. Or as Lamp Girl put it, did we get nuked? Verdun, explain that to me. Verdun, um, my history is really bad, but wasn't Verdun like a battlefield, like a bad place in like World War Two, maybe? Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm sure Skylar can correct me if I'm wrong. Wookie talks. Let's call it war. Okay, we're going to um, go to the, the tapestries, and it's revealed the answer of that. This thing is the is what happens if you choose to hide behind the tapestries, the drapings, instead uh, of getting into the cabinet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. French fortress in World War Two. Skylar says. Oh. Oh yeah. World War One. Sorry. World War One. World War One. Huge battle. Uh, I, I knew I recognized the name, but I was like, I- I'm not going to be able to place this. Look it's at like... you, Skylar, knowing things. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. I need you um, Let's hide behind the weavings. You say. No sooner have you settled down behind them than you hear a high pitched voice coming from one of the other rooms. Uh. Okay, oh, that's the voice. Okay, so, um, Tarlene! I'm trying not to just do your voice. <laughs> um, Tarlene, where are you? I know you're here, so don't try hiding. You know I can pick up your vibrations. I know that voice, says Zarkon under his breath. It's the sorceress Mordana. I wonder what she's doing here. Jesus Christ, Zarkon, it's a little bit late in the day to be introducing new characters now. I'll find you, Talin. Mordana calls, getting closer to where you are hidden. I'm getting vibrations. I'm getting warmer. <laughs> Throbbing and vibrations and meeting old men in cabinets. This is some... Uh, uh, some, some someone's wanking to this, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> And indeed, she's coming directly toward you. What'll we do if Mordana finds us? You whisper to Zarkon. Don't worry, he says. I think I can handle her. Mordana is almost on top of you when there is a loud bang, like a heavy metal door being slammed shut at the far end of the complex. Loud bang, huh? Yeah, Modana got on top of you. There was a bang. Like it's uh, it's right in itself. It's not our fault. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that this is a deeply sexual book. There you are, Tarlene, shouts Modana. I knew you were hiding. Um Oh, right, I see. Hiding? Nonsense, Tarlene exclaims. I just came down from the tower. 
I see you have your dragon stuff, but then you always do, says Mordana. You've been up in the tower directing the dragons. How exciting. I wish you'd let me try it sometime. Forget it, Tarleen says. It takes a lot of practice to control the dragons. You'd have them crashing into each other, or worse, crashing into the tower itself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a shower. A what? Asks Mordana. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Right. Um, okay. Real, real talk, everyone. <laughs> what well, my prediction now is that they're not dragons; they're planes. He's like an air traffic controller that's from the future. That's my, okay. that's my big thing here. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um. A what? Asks Mordana. You know, where I get under a spray of water and wash the dirt off. Oh, yes, I remember now, Modana says with a grimace. It's one of those unhealthy, disgusting things you do. You're such a child of your century. Tarleen sighs. You dare to call me a child? Just a figure of speech, says Tarleen. And now, if you'll just wait in the other room until I'm done... You hear the sound of a stream of water suddenly start nearby. A cloud of steam begins to rise in the room where you are hiding. Carefully, you look out from behind the weavings. You can see the vague outline of Tarlane standing in a large basin on the other side of the hanging curtain. So now we're just peeping on this dude. Yeah. Also, does this mean that the weavings we're hiding in are just towels? Steaming um, water. Yes. What's the name of the wizard again? Zarkon. Zarkon emerges from his hiding place and <laughs> He steps into the shower, <laughs> grabbing the man roughly by the back. <laughs> Wraps his arms around him and caresses his chest. <laughs> you missed a spot, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that for you. <laughs> My, it seems you need a deep clean. Mm. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Stephen Water is pouring down on him from some spot in the ceiling. Propped up against the outside of the basin is a long, thin metal rod. The dragon staff itself. Do you think you can reach Tarlane's staff without his seeing you? Vergana whispers as she peeks out beside you. Okay, so do you try and sneak out and snatch the dragon staff on page 31? Well, we decide to wait on page 112. So are we stealing the dragon staff on 31 or yes, waiting? We're doing on that. We're stealing this dragon staff. He the man's naked. He can't do much about it. Yeah, what he's, the hell he's is in the he shower. And the best time to rob a man is while he is showering in yeah. between controlling dragons. No, oh, I What's... think it might be time for my 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 contractually obliged. Oh yes, right. yeah, yeah. Jackson's it's not my fault, man. Skylar and um, and <laughs> someone else. Who was it? Lamb like girl that. kept making me drink facts. <laughs> These normally last me like you know, like a night, like one can, you know. And I've just like pounded one, and now I'm on the second. It's just like, 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 like I'm only human. I'm only human. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Skylar wants to snatch that staff. Thank you very much, Skylar. Uh, lamp girl is saying steal it i am with you on that i don't know like what exactly we'll expect to happen if we just wait like whether he'll sort of leave the room and it'll just be there available for us to take without having to sneak past but it doesn't seem likely i mean like on that page i think modana says like oh you've got the staff with you of course you do you always have it um so i think like this guy takes it with him so he's unlikely to leave it behind so, yeah, I think stealing that is going to be the ideal option. Why is that on page 31? Let's see what we can do with some staff theft. And maybe if I have a quick look. Um, um, okay, it's actually like super short. Right. Jackson can cap. I can fill Jackson in when he gets here. So, as quietly as you can, you sneak out into the steam filled room. <laughs> 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 so luckily for him he's out of the room at the moment <laughs> so he doesn't have to see them 
<laughs> Goog, very good to see you. Dragon Staff, is that what they're calling it these days? I just, well, it's one word for it. Do you know? Have you heard of the Dragon Staff? Can you tell me of that little dude? This is my little crystal dragon, guys. Really love this little dude. Okay. So, what was he saying? So, as quiet as you can, you sneak out into the steam-filled room and, on your hands and knees, crawl to the staff. You grab it and sneak back to the pile of weavings. While Tarleen is still preoccupied, whispers Zarkon, I'm going to confront Mordana. You must not let go of the dragon staff and don't come out until I tell you. What I have back, what I miss, what I miss. Um, not much. We came over to page 31 to steal the staff and we've grabbed it. Yeah. Um, so while Tarleen is still preoccupied, we're going to confront... Well, Zarkon's going to have a fight with Mordana now. What? Yeah. So we've got the staff. We're still hiding behind the, the weavings. This doesn't look like it goes well. No. No. Just, uh, that doesn't look great. This looks like a bad outcome. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Plywood. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And unfortunately, because you brought it up, the chat is now full of plywood. Um. Zarkon disappears into the other room. You can just barely hear him talking with Mordana. Fortunately, Tarleen has started singing to himself. You hope he can't hear them at all. Zarkon, what are you doing here? Mordana explains. Just passing through, Zarkon replies. And you, you've teamed up with this crazy dragon master. Hardly, says Mordana indignantly. But I have use of him. Ah, the dragon staff is what you're after, says Zarkon. Perhaps. Did you say something? Sorry. Did you say something? Tarleen calls out over the sound from the flowing water. Just talking to myself, Mordana calls back. Then she says softly to Zarkon, You better get going out of here fast. All right, Mordana, says Zarkon. I'm going back through the trap door. See you again sometime. What trap door? We didn't come through a trap door, did we? What? I am so lost. I didn't think we came through a trap door. Suddenly. I've got like three plywoods that I need to owe, so plywood! <laughs> Suddenly, Tarlane stops singing and turns off the water. All is quiet for a moment. Tarlane steps out of the basin, dripping wet. He reaches over and grabs one of the pieces of cloth. Unfortunately, he grabs you by the hair. Oh, God, and just, like, wipes his head on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Where am I headed? 39. Plywood. Ugh, cries Tarlane, releasing your hair. I've got to send these towels to the laundry. <laughs> he takes one of the weavings, dries himself off, and puts on a robe. Then. Just as you feared, Tarlane begins to search for his staff. All right, Mordana, where did you put it? What do you mean? Mordana asks indignantly. Listen, Mordana, I left my dragon staff leaning against the tub while I took a shower. And now it's gone. Since you're the only one here besides me, I assume that you took it. But I'm not the only one here. Or at least I wasn't until a few moments ago. Mordana says. Zarkon, the wizard, just popped through here. <laughs> Where did he go? Shouts Tarlane in a panic. Apparently just taking that story at face value and not... Yeah, yeah. It. Promise to show me how to use the dragon staff and I'll tell you. Mordana says. All right, all right. Tarlane exclaims. Just tell me. He went through that trap door over there. Morgana says. Good. Tarlane exclaims. We'll head him off easily. Quick, into the elevator. Zarkon the erotic was just here. <laughs> <laughs> Zarkon the erratic. <laughs> oh, that has to be a D&D, &D, like a bard or something. <laughs> Zarkon the erotic. <laughs> How are you doing? Never that? fear, fair adventurers, for you have discovered Zarkon the erotic. <laughs> I'm Zarkon, the erotic. <laughs> Why don't you walk up and down for me? 
Right. Yes, okay. yes, bend over. Pick up that penny. <laughs> Plywood. Into that what? Asks Mordana. Never mind, just get in. Tarlane says, pushing her into a small room with a circled arrow over the door, just like the one you saw down below. The door closes and the arrow starts to move. Shit. Suddenly, Zarkon is back through the trap door. They fell for it, he cries. Come on out. Then he points his staff at the moving arrow. An explosion blasts away part of the wall above the door. That should hold them for a while, he says. They're trapped in the shaft. <laughs> this book won't stop. It, like, I don't know if it, if it doesn't know what it's doing or it just finds it funny as well. <laughs> you know, they, they, they say this shaft's a bad mother. But... <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> but I'm talking about shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Focus. Focus camera. There we go. Right, okay, so... Now, oh, sorry, that's your line. Now that we've got the dragon staff, what should we do? Find the stairs to Zarlane, to Tarlane's tower, Zarkon replies. If we reach the top, I can try to call the eagles to rescue us. Eagles? exclaims Vagana. You must be joking. I think we should search for an exit down here. She turns to you and asks, what do you think? So, do we rip off Lord of the Rings entirely I mean, <laughs> and go to page 70, uh, on 44, sorry? Or do we look for an exit here on page 78? Am I allowed to ask, like, a technical question before I, I, I answer that? Yes. Okay, when was this book written or published? Uh, hang on. It'll be in here somewhere. Mm hmm uh, Bantam books. Let's see. Do, 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 do. 1984, I believe. Okay, so it's it's presumably this was before, like like Lord of the Rings was mainstream. You know, like as 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 good as Lord of the Rings is, I get what you mean. Yeah, like before the movies, most of y'all had never fucking heard of it. Um. Yeah, like what? Like uh, there would have been what? Not that? not, not our Ralph audience. Bakshi version. Not actual maybe? like chatting audience. Like you, you guys are cool, but you know what I mean. Like nobody knew about Lord of the Rings before, like the Steve Jackson movies. So do they? Do the writers think that they're being pretty like clever and like nuanced with this kind of like let let's get the eagles because they're kind of like. Not none of these kids have read Lord of the Rings. They don't know. They don't know that that's like a fantasy thing. I suppose, yeah, because like these games are kind of aimed at a younger audience. Yeah, and so, I, I think it's, it's also that sort of reference that if you did know it, like if if, if you're because there are plenty of people who had read Tolkien at the time. Yeah, yeah, if they did know. Then they'd enjoy the reference. Like yeah. it's, it's like it's more. It's it's a bonus rather than anything else. Yeah, so. yeah. Because because it, it sounds insane if you, if you haven't read Lord of the Rings. Let's see. Interesting. I, so in in that case, I think I'm going to vote Eagles. So you're saying Eagles? Interesting. I think so. We've got Lamp Girl. Where's my cursor? Lamp Girl is also saying Eagles. Although worryingly, um, Patrick's going against me and saying no Eagles. So. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Skylar's as eagles as long as we get to ride with Zarkon. I can't promise that, <laughs> but it's, it's the best cho chance you'll get. The question is, Skylar, do you want to be the big spoon or the little spoon? <laughs> I just, does it count when you're riding on the back of an eagle? Yeah, fuck yeah, it counts. Um, okay, so right, how how did how does this add up? Have we got a tie here. I think I think we do. I've got. One for each, I think. Yeah. So, what it, we're going to tie break on this? You said Eagles, Jackson. I am. Um, yes, I think so. Okay, let's let's find out because I'm also we we are sort of getting to what we're already over our time. So, oh, oh fucking hell! And forty four is right here. So, let's try the tower. You say. The door to it must be down this way. It is. 
Vagana shakes her head in disbelief as the three of you start up the tower stairs. We must find a way to destroy the dragon staff, Zarkon says. Can't we just smash it or throw it off the top of the tower? You ask. I don't think so, he answers. It might just release the dragons and cause devastation in a new, uncontrolled way. Well, let's just do that. Let... Soon you reach the top of the tower. Well, yeah, like, if that's not what his aim was for destroying the dragon staff, like, what other destruction of the dragon staff won't cause that? I, I don't know what the fuck is going on with this Sarkon fella. I think he's high. <laughs> <laughs> Soon you reach the top of the tower. You close the door to the platform and lock it from the outside. No wonder Tarlane can direct his dragons from up here, says Zarkon. We can see half a dozen kingdoms down there. The dragon staff in your hand begins to beep. There's a row of small bumps along one side of the staff. They push in when you press on them and pop out again when you release the pressure. It's a remote control, got it. Yep. Far on the horizon, <laughs> a row of black spots bob in the sky. I... Don't understand this, you say to Zarkon. When I press the top bumps on the staff, the black dots disappear. But when I press the bottom bumps, the dots come back. Those black dots must be dragons many leagues away, Zarkon says. You are doing something with them or to them. This, bo this bodes ill, I fear. I must try to contact the eagles before it's too late. Someone come up with a decent eagles joke. Something about Hotel California or some shit. I can't think of one. <laughs> but yeah. before Zarkon can do anything, you notice that the dots have grown into definite shapes and are getting larger by the second. The dragons are heading back to the tower. Frantically, you press all of the small bumps on the staff, but it doesn't turn the formation of dragons back. Soon, they are immense shapes blocking at the sun and hurtling straight at you. Turn to page 14. The three of you duck as several enormous dragons roar by the tower, narrowly missing it. The blast of wind almost blows you off the top. A number of other dragons are circling around in confusion about half a mile away. Their claws flash in the sunlight, and blasts of flame and smoke shoot out from their huge, gaping mouths. One of them swoops close to the top of the tower, trying to see who now carries the dragon's staff. For a moment, you look into two terrible eyes. I hope they don't blast any flame in our direction, says Vagana. It would roast us alive. As long as we have the dragon's staff, I think we are safe, says Zarkon. But then, to make matters war worse, the door to the tower begins to shake. Your ears ring with the sound of a sledgehammer being applied to the inside of the door. I fear that Mordana and Talane have already escaped our little trap, says Zarkon. What can we do? Quick, says Zarkon. Hand me the dragon staff. Sure. So we'll give that to him on page 17. There's no option, I'm afraid. It's an option. Okay, we get a choice here. The door to the tower is beginning to buckle at the hinges. Zarkon waves the dragon staff in the air with one hand and his own staff with the other. Suddenly, the ugly spined head of one of the dragons appears next to the top of the tower. The dragon's broad wings flap furiously in the air to keep it suspended there. I'll jump onto the dragon's head first, says Zarkon. You two follow as quickly as you can. The tower door is just about to give. Zarkon, then Vagana, jump onto the dragon's head and cling desperately to its horns. But now that it's your turn, the dragon's head has drifted out several feet. You don't know if you can make the jump. Okay, guys, do we try the jump? Or do you wait and take your chances with Mordana and Tulane? Which one is it? Are we jumping like it's the end of True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, like you, you just made my decision for me, man. <laughs> I don't know why that, that's what first came to my head is yeah, the ending of that with the 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 like Harrier jet and like I having to love Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. Like he's a Republican, he fucked the maid, but you know, like he's good people. He yeah, I I, I love <laughs> like I love the stuff he did when he was like 
like he had that sword and he, he like got all Conan and stuff. And he's like, this sword is like democracy. It has yeah, to be put through the yeah. fire and tested and hardened. And I was like, yeah. Now, I don't go. want you to go out and forge a sword. But what I want you to do is think of like, why is he turning to pop from um, <laughs> League, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Um, <laughs> or League of Gentlemen, rather. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Lamper Girl, he's high every day of the week. I believe you're talking about Zarkon. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I can see that with this dude. This is actually just a low budget LARP. <laughs> like all what this I mean this is an extremely high budget like to pull off like the LARP stuff that's done in this book <laughs> like it's, it's pretty big oh the, there's been pulling off being done make no mistake <laughs> wait or will you fall to your death the future man is misunderstood I, it, yeah, there is a mystery behind the man from the future that we haven't really had resolved yet nor shall we I suspect <laughs> I don't know because people say it's like, yeah, we've got Lamp Girl wants us to go to 106. Helena wants to go to 106. Um, it's only Skylar who's said to jump so far. That, you know, that's weird. That makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think it's because I was going to say jump. I, I understand that. Yeah. And that was my sort of thing as well. But I think we're, I think we're now waiting. I think we're going. Oh okay. yeah, to one oh six. All right, no, no, no. Like, like, I was going to say jump, but the fact that Skylar says jump and the fact that Patrick doesn't, I <laughs> think I'm wrong. Change everything around. <laughs> Andrew I mean? Willard has has put in a vote for jump, though. To be fair, unfortunately, uh, you're still outnumbered. Um, it's it's like um, it's kind of like Brexit. <laughs> you know, it's like when um. I, I, I was initially, I was like, remain. I was like, like oh, yeah, definitely remain. And then David Cameron started saying, oh, remain. It's definitely remain. And I was like, oh, re really? <laughs> oh, hang on. I need to rethink this. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't work out. No, it didn't. <laughs> it did not work out. No. Okay. You watch the space between you and the dragon grow wider as you turn and look back at the door. The hinges give way and the door comes crashing out. You stand there facing Tarlane and Mordana. Tarlane looks at you and then at Zarkon on the dragon's head several feet out from the edge of the tower. Tarlane has some sort of metal object cradled in his hand. He starts to point it at Zarkon. Quick as a flash, you bat his hand aside. The object makes a loud noise as it goes flying off into space. Tarlane looks at his empty hand in amazement. For a second, immediately, you tackle him and throw him to the tower platform. <laughs> what the fuck? Show the is, picture. Apparently, this is Tarlane, who looks like Destro. Yeah! <laughs> like with a monocle. He really does! Destro from from um, G.I. Joe, Joe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah G.I. Joe, yeah. Yeah, that is Destro. <laughs> like, you know, like, he doesn't seem to have the metal head in the same way, but... Yeah, dude. <laughs> and so then this chick... Is, is that the Baroness? <laughs> I mean, I, I, she's, yeah, I, I kind of like I kind of like the design. It's it, it's fun, like a, the weird hat. I don't know. I always thought, like, it's just a, uh, what's the word, a mystique ripoff with the skulls on the belt there? I, um... I didn't even see the weird hat. I thought it was just like a weird, like, like I thought it was just like a kind of Grace Jones hairstyle. <laughs> oh, she had just like a big flat top. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's Grace <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Lamp Girl says it looks like a Street Fighter reject. They what? both look like, <laughs> like they Grace both look like copies, like, you know, kind of like copyright free copies of existing IPs. Yeah. Destro and Grace Jones. Cool. We got it. We got it. Meanwhile, Mordana and Zarkon are having a different kind of battle. <laughs> Their burning stairs meet midway in the air, and a crackling ball of flame forms there. Zarkon is struggling to control the dragon with the dragon staff as the flaming ball creeps closer to him. Oh, it's Tal like um, it's like uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, okay, yeah. Yes, all right. I see what you're doing there. That took me a long while to realise. Yep. It's Lopan firing off his pinky beams. <laughs> Tarlane struggles free of your grasp and dives back down toward the tower again. You grab Mordana from behind, just as the ball of flame is about to envelop Zarkon's head. 
the flame evaporates. You've saved Zarkon from a fiery death. Then the dragon with Zarkon and Vergana flies off. Mordana whirls around to give you her flaming whammy. <laughs> what? <laughs> A flaming Take whammy. A flaming whammy. <laughs> Take it. Mm, it tastes like it tastes like Doritos. <laughs> um, but before she can, you duck down under her line of sight and give her a shove backward. At the same moment, Mordana grabs hold of you, and both of you sail off the edge of the tower platform. Oh fuck! This is going right down to the wire. I really want us to to win this. Oh. We've got an ending. We've got an ending. So this could be a win. Okay. As you fly over the edge of the tower, Mordana lets go of you. You slip down and grab her ankles above you. What? what? <laughs> must, that's not how gravity works, I think. Mordana spreads out her arms and her cape fills the air, slowing your descent to the ground. The two of you land with a crash at the bottom of the tower. You are shaken up, but otherwise all right. You run away from the tower as fast as you can. In the distance... You see that the dragon has set Zarkon and Vagana down on the ground. Then it flies up into the air and blasts the tower with its flaming breath. Yeah, fuck yeah. The top of the tower explodes in flame and smoke, hurling huge stones in all directions. You are already running toward Vagana and Zarkon. You reach them safely through the thick pall of black smoke. When the smoke clears, there is no trace of Tarlane or Madana. And in the confusion, the dragon staff has disappeared. You, Zarkon, and Vergana hike back down the mountain to town. For the time being, you've had your fill of treasure hunting. Did we and win? Yes, I would call that a win. Is the next page like you win but with treasure? Zarkon, Nali, and you make your way back along the river. Suddenly, you are surrounded by small figures with crossbows. Nali! One of them shouts. You come back! The dwarfs lead you to their banquet hall, where they prepare a feast in your honour. Zarkon, having finished his first mission, vanishes back into the mountain. Later, when you tell the dwarves of your quest for dragon treasure, they take you to a small observation hall high above the dragon's den. You feast your eyes on the treasure that is piled on the floor way below but you also see the size of the dragons guarding it. You are quite satisfied when the dwarfs give you a purse full of gold, nuggets, and lead you safely out of the mountain. So I'm, I'm not sure you actually get uh, an ending at all, perhaps, where you get uh, the, the treasure. Uh, I can't hear you, Jackson. You might be on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Do you remember the chewing gum gold nuggets? No. Oh, that, it was cool. It was like it was chewing gum, but it, they were all like little, like tiny little yellow pieces, and they came in a cloth bag. Oh, good. that is kind of fun. You got as much as you wanted, and you were just like, blah, blah, blah. it was good. Oh, let me just move the camera back while we say goodbye to everyone. Yep. It was a good. good I remember. There was a cereal. There was a cereal called like Gold Nuggets or something. Yeah, Gold there was. was. Yeah. I remember that. That was quite nice. I quite like those. Yeah. They so, were right. everyone, that, that's it for our stream today. But thank you so much for joining us. It's been a really good one. It's been quite a good book, actually. Um, yeah. You know, bit bit suspect at times with uh, this old man Zarkon and what he's it been doing. It was Zarkon. It was just Zarkon, man. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. But yeah, it was really good, and we've had lots of fun with you guys. Apparently, Skylar said they had a gold, a coal gum. What did that taste like? Like licorice or something? Or what was that? Maybe like blackjacks. Hello, says thank you, and thank you, Helena, as well. Skylar and Helena, thank you so much for your monetary support today. That really is appreciated. I really yeah. appreciate it so much. Thank you. <laughs> we love money, as it turns out. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Daddy's arc on, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. So, yeah, so Skylar, Patrick, Elena, uh, Lamp Girl, we had Gooch turn up, we had James, we had other people as well who I think are escaping me. Mr. Action, of course, you were here voting with us. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining. It's always good to play with you. 
Um, yeah, make sure that you're checking out the other content we've got on the channel. We've got more audio books up and we're doing plenty of uh, live streams. We did our uh, Andor episode 11 review. If you're watching Andor at the moment, you can check that out. Um, and as always, leave a like on the video. Helps us out. Subscribe if you're not already. But until the next time we see you guys, all that's left for me to say is that we 